I consume a lot of stuff between physical books and audiobooks and Kindle books and podcasts, newsletters, online articles, tweets, online courses. I am constantly surrounded by information that ranges from completely life changing to very annoyingly. I'm not sure if I'll ever need this, but I don't want to let it go. And it's very difficult to manage and process all of these things. In the good old days before I had any sort of electronic devices or internet, what I used to do is just write in the margins of my books and I had little notepads where I would take particularly interesting information but with the sheer quantity and sources of what I am reading right now that has become completely impossible and most importantly inefficient. So a few thousand pounds of online note-taking courses later and between one and two personal decades of taking notes from books in general I have come up with quite a few different principles, systems, and ways to effectively capture notes from everything. So I take this a bit overboard with things like my second brain. If you want to check that out, there's a video somewhere. But the first step of that capture, I think is something that is important for basically everyone. If you want to trust something other than your short term memory with something that you have read, that is a capture system. And today I'm going to show how I take all of these sources that I mentioned and put them all together in one place. So I have just two Notion pages for literally everything. So all these resources just come to Notion and that is all that I do. So if this sounds interesting, I'll be going through it in this video. The first thing I'm going to be talking about are my principles of capture, just because this is such a huge topic and I have some personal kind of rules for how I approach note taking in general. But if this is kind of too theoretical for you, you can skip ahead. I'll be talking about digital books, audio books, physical books, online articles and tweets in this video. So you can skip ahead to any segment that you prefer instead. So let's get started with the fun theory, which are my five personal principles of capture. I have my computer in front of me. Let's get started with all of them. So number one, it needs to be as frictionless as possible. I am renowned for being on my phone without having slept yet at 3.30 or 4 a.m. just scrolling through Twitter. And this is not the time where I am going to be going through a full article or deciding on what's important or not. So I need whatever sort of system I have to be super, super easy where I can take any I want and send it to where I want it to be within preferably less than two seconds. I think that is kind of the range of patience that I have for these sort of things. It needs to be frictionless because I need to be able to do it from anywhere on any device and I don't want to lose out on potentially valuable information that I don't have the patience, attention or time to give. My second principle is that all this information needs to be siloed into as few places as possible. If I have all the information that I capture kind of spread among 10,000 different apps and different sort of systems, it's kind of pointless. I've done this in the past. I used to have it in separate notebooks, for example, or I tried a few different um, iOS apps and they're all great for their separate purposes. But the issue is everything just remains separate and everywhere. And in the end of the day, I have to do so much work to find what I need. And most importantly, 99% of things I'll completely forget that I ever captured. So I've come to the point where literally everything that I ever see or read goes into two Notion pages. And that is kind of the system that I prefer and the best way that things are done for me. But whatever kind of final destination that you have, I would recommend having one ideally or just a few final destinations for all the information that you capture. So it always can be just one quick search away. Number three is that whatever system of capture that I have needs to have levels of processing. And what I mean by this is that, for example, I'll get something that I think might be important, but I haven't read it. And I might approach it later and realize mm, this is completely pointless. And in the same way, there'll be a few gems within that. So I would need to have a system where I can delete the things that I find are not valuable and keep the things that I find are incredibly valuable. So not everything has the same level of importance and there needs to be a few steps here that I can take something farther into being very, very important and more important, more important and kind of like keep promoting information and also be able to keep demoting information based on how relevant or valuable or important it is for me. These filters do not have to be immediate. Sometimes I will filter through things about six months or even a year after I've first captured them. But the main thing is that I can sleep peacefully at night because I know that they are somewhere safe. Number four is that everything needs to have resources no matter where I capture things from, I need to know who said this, what book did they say it in, for example, what study did it come from, what web page did it come from, because it's kind of rude to mention other people's things without mentioning the resource. So I do try to keep kind of the backtrack of where things come from. And sometimes 
very very fortunately these things are just done automatically but it's just something that I keep in mind if I'm taking physical notes or things elsewhere that are not done with kind of the internet backlog and number five and I think this is the most important one is that all of my captures need to have a why whenever I capture something it is always because I'm finding it interesting at the moment but I am always a different person even within you know, half an hour, I will become a different person. It's the kind of context that I have in my mind, which can be emotional, which can be based on the things that I've been reading that day or that week or that month, which primes my mind in such a way that when I'm consuming something and finding it interesting, it is for a specific reason that is very unlikely to come up again and again. So if I see something, sometimes even one day later, but even worse, if it's something that I captured three years ago, I have no idea why I found this interesting, what I thought I was going to use this for. So I have this very strict rule in my mind that whenever I capture something, and I try to stick to this most of the time, whenever I capture something, this might be a small highlight in a book, or it might be a full article or a full YouTube video, I will always write why I thought this was interesting and what I thought I could use this for. Because without these two bits of context, I can never snap right back to what I was thinking easily. And it just becomes a piece of information which I might as well have left on the internet because even like searching for it on a YouTube web page and searching for it in my notes will just yield the same thing. I have no clue, it's not personalized to me, and I don't know what it's about. So I think this fifth principle of capture is the most important in my opinion. If you want to make any sort of changes to your capture system, the first thing that I would do is just write your whys. Why did you find this interesting? Why did you want to capture it? So firstly, let's talk about digital books, and these are by far the easiest thing to kind of capture from. I usually read digital books on Apple Books or recently I've bought a Kindle and I use a Kindle, um, but these are the two places where I will be reading digital books in general. What I use for these is an app called Readwise. It's honestly like having a little personal assistant which just sorts out all your information for you. So what it does is that it connects to Kindle and then it also connects to Apple Books and it takes everything for me and puts it into a Notion personal library. So as I'm making highlights in my book and as I'm making notes in my book for those highlights, they all get automatically put into a kind of page on Notion, which has the book title and the book information inside and all of my notes, all of my highlights will be there. And these automatically keep refreshed and keep uploaded. So every time that I am reading a book, all I have to do is treat it in the same way that I used to treat a physical book before, where I just write in the margins, which is the equivalent of note taking in the book and underlying things, which is the equivalent of kind of highlighting and everything automatically goes and gets saved onto my Notion page. And I have a full library there, which I'm building. Unfortunately, Readwise is quite new for me because until very recently, I didn't feel as though I could afford it, but it's honestly been the most life-changing thing for digital book capture. Now, if you are still in the boat and you cannot afford something like Readwise, what I used to do in the past is, for example, any sort of app like Apple Books will allow you to export all of your highlights in one place. So you can see them one by one on the app, but if you go to export, it will allow you to send these in an email to yourself. So you'll get an email with all of your highlights and notes in one place. I would copy all of this thing and put that into a Notion library of my own. So it takes a few extra minutes and it's not automatic, but definitely if you don't want to spend the money, you can do this. The same thing is applicable for most sort of apps where you can read things on. Number two is audiobooks. And this is where things start getting a bit difficult. When I first started listening to audiobooks, I got so frustrated when I realized that they don't give you the physical book automatically. I thought, I just think that, that would be such a good idea to just get both of them together because then it becomes so much easier to take notes. But um, I'm sure there's very good reasons why this is not being done. But basically the way that I take notes on audiobooks depends on how amazing the audiobook is. So for example, I started reading 101 essays, which will change the way that you think a few days ago. And within literally a few paragraphs, I thought, oh no, this is not an audiobook. This will have to be a physical book because it is so, so good. I have so many notes to take on this. So what I did then is I kind of bought the physical book version of it, or you can download the physical book version of it. And I will listen to the audiobook while I am also reading it on my Kindle or on my computer. And then I will just highlight it as I'm listening to it at the same time. So then it turns into a physical book and I am using the way that I described earlier. Or if the book is not that great, and I'm sorry, um, or if there's just not that many highlights to take, what I will do is, as I'm listening to the audiobook, I probably have my phone next to me because I'll have headphones on and I'm listening from my iPhone. What I do is I just go to my Apple Notes app. It's actually one of my favorite apps of all time. It's so easy and quick and efficient, and it loads a lot faster on my phone than Notion does. So I'll just take notes as I'm listening, and these will generally not be quotes word for word, unless there's something that is needs to be very specific, 
when I'll actually pause what I'm listening to and type the thing out. But what I'll generally do is just write the main gist of what I'm finding interesting or the main learning points of what is kind of transforming me while I'm reading this book and I'll create a note of it. And once I'm done with the book, I will just copy and paste this into Notion. I don't find this to be too tiresome. I'm used to doing this all the time. And um, yes, if you ever see me out and about in London, kind of texting on my phone, there's a seven out of 10 chance that I'm actually taking notes of a book that I'm listening to than texting someone. So a lot of my typing on my iPhone is actually me taking book notes rather than anything else. That's how I take notes of audiobooks and next I'm moving on to physical books. I have such a strong love-hate relationship with physical books because I think reading a physical book and taking notes in it and kind of um, underlining things, there is no more therapeutic of an activity for me than doing that. However, when it comes to collecting my notes and processing notes, it is so painful to do it that way that I just don't know how to balance it. But because I've had to move around so much, I've kind of decided to not allow myself to buy physical books anymore. So I've kind of circumvented this problem. But sometimes, especially philosophy books, I just, I, I buy them physically because they are so, so, so much fun to use. So what I do for physical books is what I used to do in the past, which is kind of underline them and create notes on the margins. Until my early twenties, I used to actually treat books as they as though they were made of gold and never write in them but now I just like fall down the pages and I yeah don't care as much so um I will kind of take notes wherever they are important in a book if I'm taking particularly a lot of notes on a page I'll literally fall down the edge of the page and just go through the book that way and in the end there are two ways that I would recommend taking notes from physical books. The first thing I will do is I will then download the online copy of the book. And as I will open that in usually my Apple books, and what I will do is I will search for the first three or four words in a part that I want to highlight. And then if you do that search, there's like a 99.99% chance that you will get to just the right place in the book. Sometimes if it's a special word, I just type in one word and it probably gets me to the right place. So I will just find it in the online book and I will highlight it. And this feels like a very kind of therapeutic activity to me. It's quite brain dead. So um, I'll just put some loud music on and I'll just sit down in front of my computer for anywhere between like 10 minutes to an hour or two hours, depending on the length of the book. I, I will just manually highlight things on my computer and then those will kind of integrate with Readwise and go straight into my Notion as everything else. So this is one way that I do things. Another way that I do things is using Readwise and I haven't actually used this a lot, but you can just use Readwise on your phone and kind of lift the phone in front of your book and it will kind of scan the book for you and it will turn your screen. This is probably worth trying, but like I said, because I don't use physical books as a much um, in 2021, I haven't been able to utilize this feature as much. The first way I can definitely vouch for, I've done so many books this way, but the second one, yeah, we'll definitely rec recommend trying. Next is online articles. These are usually things that I find on Twitter or that Ali sends to me because I don't actually read a lot of articles. I prefer books a lot more, but sometimes there's some really great ones out there. And what I like to do to them is again, depending on their length. If it's a really, really short article, what I will do is I will just share this to my Notion and there's a great Notion web clipper if I am on my actual computer. I have the web clipper downloaded onto my Chrome and I will just click on it and this whole file will then go onto my Notion and then I'll just copy and paste the parts of it that I find interesting and I want to highlight or what happens most often is I'll just save it there for later and sometimes maybe even two years down the line or six months down the line, I might find the time that I actually need it and I'll use it. Then, or if I'm on my phone, you can do the exact same thing on a mobile device where I'll just share it to Notion and it will be saved onto this page where I have all these different links and articles together. Now, the other thing that I will do if it's a very long article in praise of idleness comes to mind here, 100% would recommend a great read. What I do in that case is that the whole article is kind of like a book, so it will need processing of its own. So in this case, I do not like sharing it to Notion immediately, but I share it through Instapaper. So Instapaper is kind of like a highlighting app. So I realize I'm mentioning quite a few apps in this. Um, I do tend to invest a lot of money in my note taking because it makes me really happy. But um, through Instapaper, what I will do is I'll kind of highlight on it and it does the exact same thing. It's kind of like a Kindle for PDFs and those will integrate with my Readwise and they will just send it to my Notion automatically. Or you can kind of send the highlights to your Kindle if you want to read it in your Kindle and export it that way. But my favorite way to do it is using Instapaper. If you don't want to spend any sort of money um, and you want to read the article at that time, what I would do is using Notion, which is free. So I would share the whole article to Notion or I would just copy and paste the highlights of the article that I would want to save if you are reading it at that time. And lastly is Twitter. This is a new one for me because I used to think that Twitter was just the place for 
petty arguments and although it really doesn't disappoint in that department I find that it is a gold mine of curated content I find Twitter threads to be absolutely incredible and I would definitely recommend getting on the app just for that reason alone so with Twitter there are different things that I will capture some of the things will just be like haha funny things that I want to send to people at a more social hour than when I'm usually browsing Twitter so those will just go straight into the in-app bookmarks um, and that's where I will put most of the things that I like I'll just save directly on Twitter but also what I will do is I will share them from my phone directly to the links page on my Notion where they will be saved and then depending on what they are if it's an external article it will go to my Insta paper or if it's just the tweet itself it will stay in my links in Notion. So with the system everything has ended up in two places one is my Readwise Notion library and two is my links Notion library. For Readwise this is where I collect things from all the articles I've read all the Kindle books I've read all the Apple books I've read um, so all of the Insta papers will just go directly onto that Readwise page and then the second page is my links page and this is my notion web clipper so these are things that i found either on my desktop or on my phone that are just short and snappy there are links to different things that i've seen sometimes i'll find someone recommends a web page that for a product that i might not buy immediately or i'll see something that i'll think oh this would be a great gift for my sister for her next birthday so i'll just share this thing to my notion web clipper and then i'll have a library of mostly links there. So these are the two places where I can find absolutely everything. One last important thing that I want to add to this video and that is the cases where I don't take notes. There is this weird overlapping conditions of things where they're interesting but the notes are either too much and I know I won't really need them and it would be too much work for too little effort and that's where I will not take notes from a book I'm reading. In that case I love to use things like short form. Now on the surface short form looks like a book summaries page and I mean, I guess it is. The thing is, it doesn't replace books. The aim of the app is not that you read those ra rather than reading the book itself. And usually the most of the things that I read on short form, I have read the book itself first. For example, I really like the E-Myth Revisited. It's a very good business book for someone who's completely clueless when it comes to business like me. But because I don't find the topic that interesting, I'm not really taken to making highlights on it. So what I do instead is I trust somewhere like short form where I'll go and I know that all the best highlights and all the best summaries are already made after. I've read the book. The great thing about the e myth revisited on short form, for example, is that it's also curated the main um, and the most important exercises there too. So I can go through them in the shortened version itself. And I don't have to reread the whole book again and again, but I really, really don't enjoy doing so. What I love about short form is that they're not trying to make you stop reading the books itself, because that would be something that I don't think I could align myself with ever, but they just try to make it easier to access the great ideas in incredible books. If you're like me and you're trying to get into things like business and health, or if you're interested in productivity, there are literally so many books on short form that I would recommend. They get updated weekly and we can actually even vote on which books get to go on there. So I want to thank short form so much for sponsoring this video and they've given us a free five day trial to kind of check out the books and see what they offer. So the next 100 visitors to shortform.com slash Elizabeth will be receiving unlimited access for five days and a discounted annual subscription. But yes, this is how I have completely removed any sort of anxiety when it comes to reading and capturing and saving and processing information. There's still other things that I capture like podcasts and YouTube videos but they're not technically things that I read so I think I might do a separate video on those please let me know if you would be interested in something like that if you made it so far and you're probably interested in kind of note-taking and that sort of thing I have a whole video on how I set up my second brain which might interest you but otherwise we're all done here thank you so much for spending this time with me I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think thanks bye